Hello guys, in this video I'm going to show you a, something that I would consider a unique feature in Cascade that is riverbed carving. So we have an original a unique system that allows you to create really really amazing uh, particular on your landscape. So I have this terrain and uh, this is the size and resolution. So I'm going to open uh, my cascade manager and create a river. <coughs> and I can start easily to let's see okay we can go from here i put the first marker okay so first of all note that if i select a marker I have a bunch of information and uh, in this case what is important is the top and top is <coughs> between the previous node. If it's red means that top is negative and so we don't have the right slope. I can click on S and I can move my marker till I will not get a green yeah. And what another important point is that the first point is Markham Chan and it will go our direction. And um, easy way is go in global design utilities and auto slope and we will find the right point. So this is really, really basic, and we have created uh, 1,700 meters river. Now we can move to design mode, and in design mode, Cascade is going to create a virtual mesh that gives us information about how the terrain is going to be shaped when we run a conform operation. Uh, so we have, uh, let's go to the setting. Uh, we have ground setting as global, and after we have uh, ground setting as uh, per node setting. So we have more option per global. We start with ground bed, where we can assign a shape for our bed. And this is, we have few predefined shape. And uh, <clears throat> this is going to apply it through the entire uh, um, river. And uh, we have a depth that is default. Let's put to weight. And so putting to weight is applied to the entire. Let's go in detail. We see this is, let's say, is 2, and this is 8. And so we can see with our virtual mesh how it's going to be. And after, <coughs> um, we can go to surface setting and surface, let's say, our river, we can put to yes. So here we are in this situation. I can turn off uh, my design mode. Oh, sorry. And you see, this is my original terrain. And this is the overview, the virtual view, because we are not, terrain is not changed. Of our, uh, yeah. And um, uh, let's see something else. Uh, always uh, here, a uh, gun bed, fat age. 
So, what we are going to try to do is to give uh, a natural, uh, a natural shape to our river, uh, and this way we can change the left and right edge. Uh, And so in this way, our river is not boring, flat river. Yeah. So another option, yeah, you have to play. Uh, what is important is that you can have different param parameters for left and right side edge. Uh, let's go on another global parameter that is terrain blending. Uh, we, we can have a higher resolution for the uh, virtual mesh, but this is not really useful because anyway, this is a, a kind of preview of how our terrain is gonna be curved, but uh, we can uh, have uh, left and right different um, setting. This is always global, and so uh, update all the node. So this is. And um, we have more. Let's say I'm going to delete this node. And from here, uh, I'm going to have a, I go to point and uh, I can lock the sides. And in this case, left and uh, right will be always in sync. So let's say I make larger. And so now I'm going to put new node. And the new node will have the last node setting. Now I go in global. And I know that I will, this should be useful to have here, uh, to have a shortcut with the key. But let's go out of slope. And here we are. So this is our river. Not like flow is different, and usually, let's see other two parameters very, very nice that uh, help to remove some artifact that uh, uh, we are going to have because the resolution and the direction of uh, the mesh terrain is different from the one from our uh, river, and this. Is going to be evident in this image where you see we have yeah different resolution at the end the terrain is nothing different than a mesh that has some a bit more some specific particular uh, properties parameter for the rendering and so to avoid any kind of jittering effect we added uh, this parameter that is a padding. Oh, sorry. This is it. Uh, uh, yeah, it's global. And this we have. This define an offset. And it has created this flat area. We can also change per node if I go points here, for example, uh, per node and per H. And ideally, we can also change per node the shape of our blending. Mm, but sincerely, 
this is really, really in red case. Yeah, not common case where you have really, really huge landscape. We, I have an example that is a canyon. Uh, terrain, I guess, is uh, 40, yeah, 54 kilometers per side. So in that case, canyon is long and we expect a bit more complex. Yes, I can improve manually or I can do, I can do this, I can move behind and this and Okay, um, I can also change uh, <clears throat> um, this is forty four. This is gonna be the same, and here is gonna be the same. So Let's turn off our design mode. This should be a bit, yes. Yeah, we need, okay. And here, where the fall is gonna start, uh, we need a bit. I can also, yeah, do in this way. Yes. Let's turn off our design mode. Yeah, there is something is not really perfect. Yes, now it's better. Yeah, we have created this for. This is our original terrain. And this is the effect of this randomness that we added using uh, um, the path age, uh, yeah, the path age options. And here, here, yes. And now we can try to shape our terrain. And the first time is gonna take a bit more time because we create a restore point for our terrain. And so our operation is not destructive. You can roll back our your operation, do the change, and so on. So let's go. And terrain carving can happen in design mode, but also in default mode. Just click on comfort.
and that's our result. Thanks for watching and see you soon with next video. Cheers.